Look, man. Today we are back with another Nitrous production on this channel, okay? And we are in tune for a very interesting video. This right here is the very first interview slash conversation ever since the Astro Fest tragedy. Now, all we got from Travis Scott was his fake ass apology. <laughs> fake ass apology, my boy. He really wasn't saying too much in that video. But today we have a full hour interview with Travis Scott. Now, I need y'all to let me know in the comment section two things. First and foremost, I might be changing the format of this video so y'all get the big screen. I'm going to make myself smaller so y'all can really watch and enjoy the interview and see what he has to say for yourself. So let me know if y'all fuck with the format. That's number one. And number two, um, I'm thinking about breaking this down into multiple parts because I'm not about to sit here and watch an hour long video in one shot. So we're going to break it up into a, into a couple different parts. Let me know in the comment section if y'all want to have like two, three parts so we can watch the entire interview together. Make sure I do leave a like down below if y'all fuck with the video. But um, I'm very curious to see what he has to say after his major sacrifice, bro. He's been exposed. <laughs> I'm curious to know what he has to say. So we're about to check it out. All right. Make sure I do leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Road to one milli, bro. We are going crazy. But let's get into it. Travis Scott. A conversation with Travis Scott and Charlemagne the God. That's a big come up for Char for Charlemagne, bro. That's a this is a big interview. Let's get it. Travis Scott, what's up, brother? What I do? How you feeling? Uh, you know, um, as you, I've been on about like different type of like emotions, you know, emotional roller coaster. I mean, um. It gets so hard because, you know, I'm so, I always feel like connected with my fans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I went through something, you know, and I feel like fans went through something and people's parents went through something. And it's, you know. It, yeah, people died. They did more than go through something. They went through death, my boy. It really Tramping, you know, hurts. Broken it hurts bones, the community, bro. hurts a, a city. And it's just been a lot of thoughts, you know, a lot of feelings, a lot of grieving. Um, and just, you know, trying to get you to wrap my head around it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I really just really wanted to be there. Um, and just, you know, wish you could just kind of like hold everyone, you know. Um, kind of just heal them, talk to them, have conversations. Um, you know, it just, it, it just, you know, it really just hurts. Man. Well, what's, your, what's your intention with this conversation? Like, like what do you hope to to get out of this, or what do you hope to get out? I don't personally have an intention. I just feel like something happened and I feel like it's just, um, I needed just a way to kind of like communicate, you know? Mm -hmm. One, you know, the families are grieving, you know, it's fans that experienced something, it's fans that came to a show, uh, you know, and I feel like I just have like a, I've always been that person to always see things through mm -hmm. with um, the people that shared experiences with me. And you know, it just, things happen and you know, I just kinda, you know, it's been such a, such a time and I've just been trying to just really figure things out, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I know you, I'm, I'm sure you experienced any remorse, but was there any hesitation to have this conversation because of the litigation you may be facing? Well, I mean, yeah, of course you got people that's just like, oh, uh, what, like, you know, but um, it's not about that. Uh, you know, it's, you know, you're an artist, you, whoever people think you are, but at the end of the day, you're a human being, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you, you have emotions. Um, you want to communicate the emotions, you know, and trying to find the best way to communicate, you know, how you just feeling, you know. How have you been coping with the aftermath of everything? Just, just, just emotionally, just you as a human. I've been just in a room for a while, you know, a lot of thoughts, and luckily, you know, um, you have people around that can be kind of outside ideas, but it just been, you know, I've been doing this for such a long time, and I saw him been in a room talking to the devil. <laughs> he ain't coping with shit. My boy been in that room praying, saying, "Thank you for all my for all my uh, evil sent blessings, my boy. You're welcome for the sacrifice." You know, you nothing like this ever happened, you know, so it just kind of like you just kind of figuring out. And at the end of the day, like these fans are your family, so you just mm -hmm. feel like you lost lost something. And you just it, like you go, you do these shows honestly to 
you know, for people to have the best experience, you know, and mm -hmm. just to think that something like this happened, you just try to figure out, you know, you know, just wrap everything around. And so even just for the first couple, couple weeks, you know, it was just me sit down, but I had to really channel these emotions to just remember, like, you know, if no one's going to be a voice for these people. I got to like kind of step up and kind of like be a voice to just figure out that, you know, this doesn't happen in the future, it just shows period. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or figure out the bottom solution of what's going on and just try to ensure his people, you know, safety and what they're doing, you know. It, you said you was in the room, but then people saw you at uh, at the golf course. Yeah, where with Michael Jordan, yeah. And Mark Wahlberg. What, yeah. what, what was that? Um, it was just Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they were there. Um, you know, it was just good people to have around in the community. And, you know, that was just more like a personal time just trying to get around think like some fan came and asked for a photo. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Now, let's talk about that night, man. When, when did when did you find out things got as bad as they did? Now, that's that's the question everybody wants to know. Yeah, it wasn't really until like minutes until like the press conference until I figured out exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. You know? Um even after the show, you know, you just kinda hearing hearing things. Um but you don't know I didn't know the exact details until So you're telling me that you were hearing shit since after the show, my boy. You were hearing shit since after the show. After the show, like right after the show, you heard shit. Roddy Rich knew the details. <laughs> he knew the details. He knew the families. <laughs> he knew everybody to send the money to. Drake didn't know shit. He was at the strip club. He ain't give a fuck. But for you to hear right after the show and not do not say anything until days later not do anything until it speaks volumes my boy are you truly remorseful as you say you are it speaks volumes well, minutes before the press conference mm -hmm. and even at that moment you kind of just like wait you know what like you know you just went through something and it's just like wait what you know so you didn't know people that actually passed away nah, and stuff. Nah. Wow. Until minutes before, you know, mm -hmm. which is, yeah, you know, and at the thing is like, you know, people pass out, you know, people, you know, things happen at concerts, but something like that, it's just like. It's crazy. Yeah, people said they uh, collectively, they collectively heard folks screaming help every time you stopped the song to get your attention. Did you did you hear any of those screams? Nah, man. And you know, it's so crazy because I'm not <laughs> I'm not artist too. Like, you know, anytime you can or something like that, you want So people people are collectively saying everybody in this crowd is saying they heard help, help, help every single time the, the song ended. Everyone except for you. Camera directors heard it, saw it. Ambulances were in the crowd. Full ass ambulance trucks were in the crowd. Everybody saw something, heard something, except for you. you want to stop the show. You want to make sure, you know, fans get the proper attention they need, you know? And I, anytime I could see anything like that, I did, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I stopped like a couple times to just make sure everybody was okay. And I just really just go off the, you know, the fans' energy as a collective, mm -hmm. you know? Call a response. And I just didn't, I just didn't hear that. You know, mm -hmm. I got music, I got in ears. But I just didn't, I just didn't hear that, you know? Break that down a little more. Like, no, nobody knows what it's like being on stage except for other artists. So speak to us from that perspective of, of what you can see in here. It was like, what, 50,000 people? Yeah, I mean, you got like a, a venue, you know, feel like 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. But it's like a scene. You got lights, you got sound, you got pyro, you got, you know, you got your in ears, you got your sound, you got your mic, you know, you got the music, you got bands, all type of, you know stuff going on so it's hard, it's hard to tell excitement from 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 danger so to yeah, speak of course everything mm -hmm. kind of just sounds the same and, it, and at the end of the day you just hear music mm -hmm. you know and when you do you just hear amongst of things you know but you just when you're in a show you just enter the show and anytime you can feel anything closely you know you try to like definitely get to that so so as an artist how much can you actually i guess help in that position you can only help what you can see you know what i mean mm -hmm. And then we're not nah, even so. I don't fuck with this interview, bro. I really don't fuck with this interview. I'm gonna let y'all know right now. I'm gonna we're gonna watch this and we're gonna watch this entire interview through. 
But what it seems to me like, it seems like this is an entire conversation that's kind of guiding him to answer the questions that are going to make him look better. Make it seem like it wasn't his fault. He said, so explain what it's like on stage. Because only other artists know. Nobody else would know except for other artists. That makes it that makes it seem like it's okay to be ignoring the crowd. My nigga, there are ambulances in the crowd. And you're going to ignore that? My nigga, an ambulance in the crowd. You're going to ignore that. Come on, bro. In the crowd. Driving in the crowd. An ambulance truck is driving through the crowd and you're going to ignore that. Well, because the music and the band and my in-ears and all that bullshit that you just said? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. This interview is a guided interview. They, they prepare the questions and he knows the answers. That's what it is. This is what artists do all the time. They prepare the questions so that the artists know the answers and it makes them look good on the camera, makes them look better and improves their image. Shit like that. Let's continue though. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see what else he has to say. You know what I'm saying? Whenever it's my tell you to stop, you just stop. But this wasn't it. Well, it wasn't that night, huh? You know, raging, raging has been a part of the culture, you know, of your shows. You know, you didn't on this night, but in the past, you've encouraged, I guess, the kind of energy that could have led to something like this happening. Mm -hmm. Do you think that contributed to the energy of this night? Yeah, no, nah, I think, you know, it's said, something no. I've been working on, you know, for a while. Um, of just creating these experiences and trying to show like the experiences happening in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. You know, us as artists, we trust, you know, professionals to make sure that, you know, things happen and people leave, you know, safely, you know what I'm saying? Um, and this night was just like a regular show, mm -hmm. you know, it felt like to me. Um, as far as like, you know, the energy, people, it, it didn't feel like it was like, you know, people didn't, I don't, people didn't show up there to just be harmful. Mm -hmm. People just, I think, showed up to have a good time and then, you know, something unfortunate happened. And I think we really just got to figure out, you know, what that was, you know? Does raging make it harder to identify you know exactly with something? exactly what that was, bro. Over here communicating with the devil, bro. <laughs> we know exactly what that was, was. Going wrong in the crowd? Well, I think, you know, raging is just a, you know, they have a textbook, you know, definition. But, you know, in concerts, we've grown it to be just the experience of having fun. It's not about just, oh, harm. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. It's about just letting go and having fun. You know, help others, you know, love each other. It's not about just, you know, harm. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 that's not what it's all about. The show isn't just rambunctious for an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's not what it is. You know? oh, that's exactly what it was, bro. That's yeah. exactly so, you know, I understand, you know, you just don't, you don't want it to get too out of hand. Yeah, but you know, the co you know, the energy is high, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, that's why you want to just make sure that, you know, people are surrounded to make sure that people are just having the best experience, you know what I'm saying? You know, I can't say the energy is high, but you know, you want to make sure that people are there to, for people to have like the best experience and leave. You know? Yeah, you, you want people to have a good time, you want people to get yeah, hurt. Yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, God forbid, pass away. And you know, it's typical for you to stop a show, to make sure fans in the crowd get the help, you know, they need. There's even footage of that night of, of you doing that during the set. Were you unable to sense, like, a difference in urgency this time around? I mean, yeah, because, you know, you stop the show, but, you know, you, you know, if someone's going to have, if there's something detrimental, somebody's going to let you know, you know, or, you know, the show just stop. And, you know, that just wasn't the case, you know. I just kind of stopped the show, you know, you just ask, you have a call and response with the fans. Um, you try to, you know, generally get a response, but, you know, if you don't get, like, a hard like stop. You, a stop, you yeah. know, it's just, you, you can't, you just don't, you just go off of what's going on, you know, which makes it so, like, so crazy, because, like, you know, if I feel like, you know, anyone would have known, it would have just been, like, it wouldn't have got that far, you know? Mm -hmm. well, what headspace were you in when you posted that, uh, that initial that initial response video. I mean, it was, I think it had to have been the night of, you know? Um, so I was just in a headspace of just trying to get a communication out to my fans, you know? Um, I, I had little to no information, you know? So I was just trying to figure it out and just communicate to them, you know? Yeah, I was just reacting just literally just to get something to the fans, you know? There's people that showed up, 
Do you regret that initial video? Do you regret reacting in that way or not like not having all the information before you said something? I mean, yeah, because, you know, you, you just don't know what's going on. But at the end of the day, I don't, you know, I just wanted to get something out. You know, how my message came out, I can't, you know, I can only go off what I, you know, what I know. But mm -hmm. my true intentions of it, you know, was really just trying to get a message across and, you know, really wanted to just touch the fans, touch the families, you know, that we hear, we grieving, mm -hmm. and we'll get through this, you know, through this process. So, so what did you know in that foot? <laughs> Nigga did not say any of that in his video, bro. <laughs> he did not say shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, for, the, for the fans that lost it, bro, 10 people, my guy. 10 people died. Eight people died there. Two were confirmed after. One of them was brain dead, and one of them was a nine-year-old. And you're telling me that you didn't know that people were dying at the concert. There have been reports that police saying that they told Live Nation to, or uh, whatever whatever the, uh, the label is, the company is, Live Nation to shut it down. They didn't shut it down. They didn't stop the show. We have videos of people going to cameramen. Saying that there's somebody dying. I know that these fucking cameramen have microphones in their goddamn ear to communicate something like that. I know they do. Everybody in the fucking show has a, excuse my language, has a walkie talkie, a, a mic in their ear. Everybody has to, they have to be in coordination. All right, uh, camera 27, we're gonna need you to pan. They need to be in coordination. That's the way it is. But you didn't know anything, right? The first video. I mean, at, at that time, I think we just knew that, you know, people passed, mm -hmm. you know, um, we didn't know how, you know, that it was, you know, the news, you know, I think police came out and said something, um, you know, you're just going off of what you're seeing in the, in the, in the news, you know, you don't mm -hmm. really know nothing. And then as the days go on, you start collecting a little bit more information. They said there was a, there was like chaos and trampling being reported since the early afternoon, like, like hours before the show even started. Were you informed of any of that ahead of time? Well, no, like, um, and, um, you know, the police, he came, he came and, um, to my trailer and, you know, he congratulated me on, you know, the event and, you know, having something like this in Houston. He let me know that this, it was, uh, you know, mishap at the merge booth earlier, you know, they shut it down, but they opened it back up. They seemed got it out of control. You know, he was going to step out and just let us know if we need anything, you know, mm -hmm. have a good show. That was it. You know, um, a lot of the criticism, you know, from the tragedy they say is in the the poor planning and understaffing of the of the event. As an artist, do you have any involvement in any of that? Well, I mean, we just as an artist, you just do the creative. And for this being my festival, you know, I got you know bring artists, you know, creatively produce it. And you know, we just trust in the, you know the professionals to kind of just make sure that you know people, you know, are taken care of and you know leaving safely. You know, I just can control what I can on the stage. And then, you know, you have the professionals control what they can in the crowd, you know? It's just hard, because as an artist, you know, you want to have, like, the best shows and you want to have the best experiences and you, you know, you link with professionals to handle that side of it, you know? And then, mm -hmm. you know, you want to know what's going on. I think that's what we got to figure out, you know? And figure out what happened there, how it happened, you know? You spoke on the uh, Houston police chief. His name is uh, Troy Finney. He came to you, and he, he said he voiced concerns over the, the crowd energy. So what, what did you and your team like do with that information? What you got? Well, I think that's what the media. Um, I think that's what the media said. But I think it. I think it read to more so that he wanted us to. He knew that our crowd was you know the type of crowd that comes. It comes at a heavy crowd. So to communicate with him, if we were doing anything outside of the week's itinerary, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, that week we were doing like a lot of charity stuff prior to the festival. So, you know, do anything outside of what we had on our itinerary, itinerary let me know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we didn't even get to that point. You know, it's crazy just, you know, being there kicking it with you for a little bit. Like, I can see that, you know, this is weighing real heavy on you. Yeah. So, so how much do you, do you feel a sense of responsibility for what happened that night? Well, you know... Fans come to have a, come to the show and have a good experience, you know? Um, and I have a responsibility to, to figure out what happened here. I have a responsibility to figure out the solution. 
you know, and I gotta, and, and hopefully this takes a first step into, you know, us as artists, you know, having that more insight of what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, the professionals to kind of, you know, surround and figure out more of an intel, whether it's tech, whether it's, you know, more of a response, whether it's whatever the problem is, you know, um, to figure out that in, in, in the future and moving forward in concert safety, mm -hmm. make sure this never happened again, you know? But let's talk about those professionals. Like, how He didn't even answer the question. He asked about accountability. But look, man, I'm going to end part one right here, okay? If you guys do want to continue watching this, let me know in the comment section for part two, and we're going to continue right where we left off, all right? I know there's some questions in here about people saying that the uh, that the show was satanic and that it was a sacrifice. So I might cut straight to that interesting part, you feel me? Because I don't want to sit here and just drag it off for too long. I want to get to the juicy shit. But look. I'm going to end this video right here. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one, man. Peace.